Hello and welcome to Deaf Bible Study, the book of James. Today we begin our second to the last time together in this book. Uh, it's been a wonderful study for me. I, I know myself, I have really, I've grown myself. It's challenged me in my personal walk with God. I hope it has been the same for you. Um, you know, today we're going to talk about, last week we talked about prayer. This week we continue with the same topic, but James gives us a picture of a person who prayed with power. I don't know about you, but I, I want to pray with power. And uh, so I want you to think about it today. When I was just a boy growing up in our home church, we on every Wednesday night, every Wednesday night, we had what we called prayer meeting. It was a time mostly for adults. But when I was just a boy, I would go with my father to Wednesday night prayer meeting with my father. What happened in our church, our pastor, he would share just short, maybe 10, 15 minute Bible challenge. And then we would break up into smaller groups to pray together. I remember one man, his name was Henry. He was older. He was, I thought he was really old. I think he was older even at that time. But I can remember when I had the opportunity to pray with Henry. Now, myself, I was just a boy. So I normally, I did not pray. I just, I just sat and I listened and the other, they would go around the group I was in. I would always sit with my father. And I loved it when Henry was in our group. He was an older man. And I, I remember, I loved to hear him pray. I felt like, well, I would tell my father when we were riding home in the car, I would say, Dad, it sounds like when Henry prays, I feel like he's talking face to face with God right there in the room. You know, I think about that many, many times. I want to have a prayer life myself when I'm talking with God face to face. And he and I are in connection with each other, not trying to impress other people, not trying to uh, trick people to think I'm a very, very spiritual person. No. I want to know God intimately. And when I pray, I want to pray with power. Today in our story, we're going to hear the story of true person in the Bible who prayed with power. But let's pray ourselves here and then we'll begin. Heavenly Father, we pause right here to begin. And we're praying because we're going to talk about the topic of prayer and power in our prayer life. And I pray that you will help us to see in this person we will, we will study today. Help us to see in him some truths that will help us to change, to become people who pray with power. We ask you to help us to improve. We need to pray better because you want to have better and improve communication with us. So help us today as we study this topic of prayer again this week. We ask you to give us your wisdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. We're going to begin. We're going to, we're going to study two verses today in James chapter 5. We're coming very close to the end of the book of James. This week... And then next week, finished. So it's exciting. We have, we have studied some wonderful topics. And it's really helped me. And I, I believe it's been helping you as well. So here today we read in verse chapter number 5, verse 17. James chapter 5, verse 17. If you have a Bible, please open it. Because uh, I'm going to teach you some things. It'll be here but maybe you're going to want to write down some things, maybe in the column of your Bible to remember maybe what a word means or 
or a, a picture to help you to understand it better in the future as you go back and you open your Bible again and you read, you will say, oh, I remember that. I hope it'll be a blessing. Here in James chapter 5, verse 17, uh, James wrote this. He said, Elijah, Elijah, some Bibles say e Elias. It's the same person, just a different. It's the New Testament way of spelling is Elias. The Old Testament way is Elijah. We're going to give him the sign name of Elijah. Elijah, Elijah, all right? It says, so Elijah was a man subject unto like passions as we are. He prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth for a space of three years and six months. Three years, six months, three and a half years. So here, James, James tells us that in the Old Testament, he said, you remember the man named Elijah? We say, yes, yes. Well, he said he prayed and God held the rain for three years and six months. Wow. I thought about that. Elijah himself, uh, James begins by telling us, Elijah is not some uh, super hero. He did not have Superman on his chest. He was a normal person like us. He says here that he was a, a man subject to like passions. It means he was the same as we are. He did not have some super spiritual strength. No, he was a man like you and me. And this man, if you remember, uh, James could tell stories about Elijah. Why? Well, if you have time later, go back to the book in the New Testament, the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 17, chapter 17, verse, uh, well, through that, the beginning of that chapter, we find an interesting story there. In Matthew chapter 17, Jesus, he took with him, Jesus was here on the earth, on the earth, walking, talking, teaching his disciples, 12. But he pulled out three, Peter, James, and John. And he said, come with me, we're going to go up into this mountain. He only took those three. The other nine, he left. Those three came with Jesus Christ. They went up into a mountain. On that mountain, something happened. The Bible says Jesus Christ was transfigured, transfigured. It means he became bright, like, oh, they were, they were hiding their eyes. He was so bright, so bright. And then there appeared with Jesus Christ two Old Testament people. First was Moses, and second, Eli Elijah, the person we're talking about here. And Peter, James, and John saw Jesus with Moses and Elijah. And they were so excited. You remember Peter spoke. And Peter said, oh, Lord Jesus, it's good that uh, Peter, myself, James, and John, that we're here. Why? We can build for you three, Jesus, Moses, and Elijah. We can build tabernacles for you to honor you. As soon as Peter spoke, the Bible says a bright cloud overshadowed all of them. And, and so much that Peter, James, and John were afraid and, and they were hiding a little bit. And God's voice from the cloud said to Peter, James, and John, This, Jesus, this is my beloved Son. Hear ye him. When Peter and James and John opened their eyes, they saw, where did Moses and Elijah go? They were gone, and only Jesus was left. God was trying to impress on the hearts of these three men. Jesus is most important, top. 
Moses, Elijah, they're, they're men like you. They're sinners like you. Jesus Christ, perfect, pure, holy, and righteous. He is unique. James remembered that story. And so here, he's going to use Elijah as an example, but he reminds the people who are reading his letter, uh, don't put up Elijah real higher than yourself. He is a man like us. Can I tell you that the people in the Bible, David, Abraham, Moses, Elijah, Peter, uh, Paul, all of these people were normal people like us who God did amazing things with their lives. So you and I, sometimes we're guilty of promoting people beyond what we should. All of us together are the same. We are sinners. And if we are saved by God's grace, then we have value and God can use us. But here he introduces us. He said, remember Elijah. Now, remember, he's only a man. And that's important for us to know. Uh, but he said that Elijah here, he said, he prayed earnestly. It means he prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. That's the meaning of the word earnest. He didn't just pray one time, finished. No, no. He prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. He prayed earnestly. What? What did he pray for? That God would hold the rain. Why? If you remember in this time in Israel's history, we've got to go all the way back to the Old Testament book of, of First Kings. First Kings chapter 18 is where the story really happens. And you can, you can turn there in your Bible. We're going to go back there for a little bit. But here in the history of Israel, they had an evil king. His name was Ahab. Ahab himself, he was married to a woman whose name was Jezebel. Both of them, husband, wife, king and queen, were evil people. They convinced the nation of Israel to stop worshiping God and begin to worship the idol Baal. They had convinced most of the nation, not all, small, small group was being true to God. Elijah was one of those. We, we give the sign name to Elijah. Why? Because he's a prophet, but God took him to heaven. Elijah, he was a faithful prophet. And God told him, I'm going to bring judgment. And God held the rain because Elijah prayed. Now, God held the rain to prove he is God. Baal is false. It's not real. It's like if, if I would worship a, 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 a tree. A tree is not God. But here, Israel had become so deceived by their king and queen that they had begun worshiping Baal and they had stopped worshiping God. And God is the only God. The Bible tells us God is a jealous God. He will not share what we, what we owe worship to Him. He will not share that worship with other false idols. And so God answered the prayer of Elijah. And as it says here, it did not rain for three and a half years. Elijah was praying, what for? No rain? Not really. Elijah was really praying, God, prove yourself. You are the true God. You prove yourself to the people here. That's why he was praying. I want you to think about Elijah's prayer was important. Important for many, many reasons. I'm just going to give you three reasons Elijah's prayer was important and we can copy his example. Number one. Elijah asked God to do something that seemed impossible. Many times you and I, we, we want to pray for God to move and work, but we say, ah, 
It's not possible. Hey, with God, everything is possible. And Elijah prayed for the impossible. Stop the rain for three and a half, three years and a half. Stop it. Hold it. You say, that's impossible. Think about it. Uh, I know here in America, last, uh, last year summer, uh, California had a drought. And it had not rained in some, some parts of California for many, many months. But three years and a half? Wow. Right now, it's 2018. That would be 2000, actually, it'd be two, 2023. Yeah, 2023. I'm not good at math. 2023. Ima imagine it did not rain here for three years and a half. Wow. So Elijah asked God for something that seemed impossible. Second, his prayer was meant to draw the children of Israel back to God. I want to encourage you, number one, pray for some things that are important to God that you think ah, may be impossible. Pray. Second, pray that God will draw people back to himself. Maybe some of you have a, a husband or wife or, or friend who not saved and you think, ah, they will never become saved. You pray that God will bring them back to himself. Third, Elijah's prayer really was to remind the people who had forgotten about God that God had not forgotten his children. Elijah wanted the people who had changed from worshiping God to worshiping Baal, this idol, he wanted them to come back, but he wanted to remind them, God has not left you. You disappoint God, but God still loves you. Do you know you and I may backslide from God, and God still loves us? He still allows His, His Word, the Bible, to speak to our hearts and draw us back to Him. So Elijah's prayer, it worked. And for three years and six months, there was no rain in Israel. Now, imagine what happened. Uh, for three years, it says here, for the space of three years, six months, no rain. Think about what would happen if you, where you live, no rain for three years and six months. All of your grass would be dead, brown, dead, gone. In three years? Uh, nothing could grow. The, the ground would become like a, uh, a brick, a brick. It would be so hard, you could drop in a seed, but without water, it cannot grow. So uh, the harvest would be gone. For three years, nothing would be growing. And, and I will tell you, for three years, you would have very, very little to drink. No, no water. You would be thirsty after three years. After three years, the people began to really complain against King Ahab and his evil wife Jezebel. Uh, the Israeli people begin to complain. And what happens then? This was not normal. It was not normal. I'm sure that if this continued... The time, the, the time without rain, if it continued, what was going to happen? Those people who had changed from trusting God to trusting Baal, the false idol, now they're going to they're begin to pray and pray and pray to Baal, uh, give us water, we need rain. And maybe they would pray every day to Baal, the false God's not real. They were praying, give us rain, give us rain. But it wasn't happening. Just like a tree, you know, I keep saying like the idol, the idols is like just a tree. It's, it's part of wood that they carve maybe face and ears and mouth and eyes and nose. But it's not real. You can pray all day to that. It's not going to give rain. It cannot. It's not real. But I want you to see what happens. Three years and a half. So three years, six months without rain, 
It brought these people in Israel to a place where they had no hope. No hope. What to do? Well, let's see the next verse. In verse 18, it says this. And he, that is Elijah, Elijah prayed again. And the heaven gave rain and the earth brought forth, brought forth her fruit. How did that happen? Well, we got to go back. If you have your Bible open, go back to the Old Testament book of 1 Kings chapter 18. 1 Kings chapter 18, and we'll see the story as it opens for us. At the end of three years, six months, no rain, Elijah brought a challenge to the prophets of Baal. In Israel, there were 450 prophets of Baal. And Elijah himself alone is the prophet of God. He comes in chapter 18, 1 Kings chapter 18. I want to show you the verse. It says here in verse 21, Elijah came unto all the people and he said, Now, just hold for one second. They are on Mount Carmel. They, it's, it's not real, real tall, but they're up on this mountain. They're there. They're all gathered around. The people are gathered around. Over here are the prophets of Baal. Over here, one man, Elijah, alone, the prophet of God. Most of the people here have changed from worshiping God to worshiping Baal. Here are the prophets. And Elijah says to them, How long? How long will you halt between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. If Baal, the idol, then follow him. That's the challenge that Elijah gave, not only to the prophets of Baal, but to all of the people. It's simple. If God is God, we should follow him. If Baal is God, God small, then we'll follow him. Good challenge. The people answered not one word. So really, the people, when they did not answer, they agreed with Elijah. Okay, good challenge. We accept. At that time, the 450 prophets of Baal, they make an altar. And they put on the altar their bull and and the wood and all those things, they get it all ready, and they begin to cry out to their god, their idol, Baal. Of course, Baal is not real, so nothing happens. So they jumped up on the altar, and they're, they're crying out, and nothing's happening. They, they cried louder and louder and louder. They became more and more and more active. They began to cut with, with knives. They were cutting themselves and blood was coming from them. And they're crying out. Nothing happens. They started in the morning. All day long they were crying to Baal. Baal's not real. He did not answer. It comes close to evening time. And Elijah says, okay, I'm going to build my altar. He builds an altar, but he does some strange things. Elijah, he took, he took 12 stones, one for each tribe in Israel to build. He has 12 stones he puts around. He takes the wood and he lays it on the altar. He cuts up the, the bull and he lays it on the altar. Now he begins to dig around the altar a trench. After he finished that, he orders four barrels of water to be brought and poured over top on his sacrifice. He again, the second time, orders four more barrels to be poured over. Third time, poured over four more barrels of water over. So his bull is wet, the wood is wet, the stones are wet, and around it on the ground, it's filled with water. And Elijah, 
at this time, he begins and he prays to God. He asks God to prove himself he is God. And before Elijah can finish praying, after three years and six months of no rain, people begging and begging and begging Baal to give rain, nothing happened. After all day long of the prophets of Baal begging Baal to fire a light fire on their altar, nothing happened. Elijah prays real quick, and he has made it impossible to the, the, the human mind to think, why is he pouring 12 barrels of water on there? It'll be so wet, it will never burn. And God, the Bible says that fire came from heaven, came down. It consumed the bull. It burned up all the wood. It burned up the stones. The 12 stones were burned up. And then the fire, like it was licked, the, the water around on the ground, it was gone. God had proven himself. He, he is God. No other. Baal, false, not real. God, real. And so what happened after he prayed and the awesome display of God's power was seen there on that altar and that sacrifice, Elijah said to the people, you need to kill these 450 prophets of Baal. Also, there were 400 priests of Baal. And that day, they killed 850 of these false prophets. You say, that's cruel. That was what the Bible said should happen with people who were false preachers. And that was what happened that day. Right after that happened, uh, that's verse 21 and following. I want you to see another short part of a verse. Elijah tells a servant, there is a sound of abundance. This means abundance of rain. Now, as people looked up into the sky, where are the clouds? There were no clouds. He told the servant, go, go and look. You will see a cloud. He goes, he sees nothing, comes back. Second time goes, comes back, nothing. Third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh time he goes back and he sees one small cloud he said, it looked like the hand of a man, small. Elijah said, you better hurry and go tell Ahab, God is going to make it rain now. And it rained and rained and rained and rained. This is the story that James used here in chapter 5, verse 17 and 18. Why? Because he wants us to see that there, there is, there are... There are many, many examples of men who prayed in our Bible. And God answered in amazing ways. He used, he used Elijah as a picture for you and I, as an example for you and I, of how we should pray. Remember? Remember? Elijah asked God for something that was impossible. And God answered with what he could do, hold the rain for three years and six months. Remember that Elijah prayed that God would draw his children back to him again. And God did that. After the Israelite, after they killed the 850 prophets and priests of Baal, they went back to worshiping God. Uh, uh, Elijah's prayer was that God's people would see that God had not forgotten them. And certainly, God did, not, God did not forget them. He provided rain for them, and He provided for them all they would need if they would remain faithful to Him. So I want you to see, James used this story of Elijah to encourage our hearts today. I don't know who you might have been praying for. You think, oh, impossible. That person will never come back to Christ. Don't stop praying. God can do the impossible. 
maybe you have a, a, a problem in your church or you have financial uh, difficulties or you have a health challenge, don't stop praying, but pray with faith that God can do the impossible. And maybe you will see God, God do a miracle in your life. I want to encourage you. For the last two weeks, we've talked about prayer. James thought this topic was very important. And so he included, at, toward the end of this book, he included for us two important sections of verses to help us to see the importance of prayer. I hope it's been a blessing to you. I know one thing, it convicts my heart that I don't, I don't pray enough and I don't pray with faith enough. It's encouraged me to pray more and to pray believing God can do what He promises to do. Well, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank You for this, these two verses about Elijah. A good reminder for us that you can and will answer prayer. Help us to follow the example of Elijah. Help us to pray for things that are impossible, we think. Help us to pray for people who have gone astray, that you will bring them back. And help us to remember as your children that you never forget us. Help us, we pray, to be people who pray first and trust you first, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Next week, we will finish this book. We just have a few, I think, two verses left, and we will finish three, three verses left, I believe, and we will finish this book of James. I hope it's been a blessing for you. I will see you next week.